Oftentimes, when real estate is rented, expenses exceed rents received, resulting in a loss. But can you use this loss to offset other income? In this video, I'm going to tell you when you can and when you can't. I'm the Tax Geek, with more of your taxes oversimplified. In general, the IRS considers real estate rentals to be a passive activity, even though anyone who has ever been a landlord knows that being a landlord is anything but passive. Other passive income can come from partnerships or S-corporations that you do not materially participate in. We'll discuss material participation later in this video. The IRS usually only allows you to use passive losses to offset only other passive income. Any losses you are not allowed to take are carried forward until either you have future passive income or you dispose of the activity. For example, Alice has a rental property that generated a loss of $3,500. She also had $1,200 income from a family partnership she does not participate in. She may use $1,200 of her rental loss to offset her partnership income and carry the remaining $2,300 loss to a future year. If in the next year the rental activity generated a $750 profit and her share of the partnership income was $2,000, the $2,300 in carry-forward losses would offset those gains, leaving her with only $450 in taxable gain. This video will focus exclusively on rental property losses, when they can be used to offset non-passive income, and when they can't. When it comes to rental property losses, there are two important exceptions to the rule that passive losses can only offset passive income. You can use up to $25,000 of rental real estate losses to offset any other income, not just passive income, if you actively participate in the rental activity and you and your spouse meet certain other requirements, and you can use an unlimited amount of rental losses to offset other income if you are a real estate professional and you materially participate in the rental activity. Let's take a look at the concept of active participation. To actively participate in a rental activity, you must own at least 10% of the property and make management decisions about the property in a significant sense. These management activities can be advertising and showing the property, negotiating leases, collecting rent, repairs, cleaning, and maintenance. It doesn't matter whether you perform these services yourself or hire someone to do them. If you meet the active participation standard for rental real estate, you can use up to $25,000 in rental losses to offset non-passive income. This $25,000 special allowance is per return for all filing statuses except for married filing separately, regardless of the number of real estate rental activities on the return. The special allowance is not allowed for married taxpayers who file separately, unless they have lived apart for the entire year, in which case each spouse receives a $12,500 special allowance. This allowance also phases out at modified adjusted gross incomes between $100,000 and $150,000 and is not available to taxpayers with incomes over that amount, again, regardless of filing status. In this case, your modified adjusted gross income is your adjusted gross income without considering any passive activity loss, less any taxable Social Security, plus any IRA deduction, self-employment tax adjustment, or student loan interest adjustment. Any rental losses that exceed this special allowance may be carried forward to future years as described earlier. If you're claiming the special allowance or have rental losses that are limited and need to be carried forward, you need to file Form 8582 with your tax return. This form and its accompanying worksheets can be quite complex and is definitely a story for another time. The other principal exception to real estate rental loss limitations is for real estate professionals who also meet the material participation criteria. The IRS has very specific requirements for being considered a real estate professional, and they can apply to anyone, not just someone who possesses a real estate license. To be considered a real estate professional, two things must be true. You must spend at least half of your working time participating in real estate property trades or businesses, and this participation must exceed 750 hours per year. Real property trades or businesses are businesses where real property is developed, constructed, acquired, 
rented or leased, operated or managed, or brokered. There are seven different factors to determine material participation in an activity, any one of which signifies material participation. I won't delve into all of these factors, but primarily you must either participate in the activity for over 500 hours per year, or be the only participant in the activity, or amongst a group of participants, participate more than anyone else. Please keep in mind that as a real estate professional, you don't have to spend the 750 hours on managing the rental properties, as long as you spend that much time in the real estate profession as described above. Here's an example. Daryl works full-time in home building. He also has two rental houses that occupy an average of five hours of his time per week. Since Daryl's main occupation is in real estate construction, he qualifies as a real estate professional where rental losses are concerned. If you do meet these requirements to be a real estate professional, the real estate rental activity is no longer considered a passive activity, and all losses can be used to offset other income. The allowable rental losses are entered on line 43 on page 2 of Schedule E. In the case you have net income from real estate rentals and you qualify as a real estate professional, this income qualifies as qualified business income, resulting in a potential qualified business income deduction, and furthermore, this income is not subject to self-employment tax. This chart summarizes the three categories of rental losses and how they affect your tax liability. As you can see, passive activity losses involving real estate rentals can be a complex subject, and this video truly only scratches the surface when it comes to this topic. In addition, there may be other limitations to using losses to offset other income. As always, additional information and resources can be found in the video description. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who would find it useful. Please subscribe to see additional tax oversimplifications. This video was inspired by this comment. If you'd like to see your suggestion turned into a video, please leave it along with any additional comments or questions in the comment space below. And of course, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.